All right, so thus far we've dealt with hypothesis testing for small and large sample, but just regarding means, right? And so, as we've seen before with the confidence intervals and sampling distributions and all that stuff, yeah, we can deal with means for small and large, but we also have this other kind of monster to deal with, it's proportions. And so proportions, the equations get a little more complicated, but still follows the same general concept, and that's the way I teach it, so that it's very repetitive. The only thing that changes is how we get our Z statistic, um, but other than that, it's very similar to the large sample test statistic for the, the population mean. So let's go ahead and get started. So when dealing with problems with proportions, you always use Z instead of T. So you're always going to have you're always going to have a large sample, which remember that is just n is greater than or equal to 30, right? And so you can distinguish these problems by looking at the wording, right? So if you're having a hard time, like I don't know if this is a large mean or a large proportion, what you can basically do is just look if standard deviation is mentioned at all. So if a standard deviation is not given, you're dealing with proportions. Now I've explained this before, but for those of you who maybe like forgot, um, a reason for that is because as you can see in this formula here, the standard deviation for the, or the standard error of the sample proportions is irrespective of any standard deviation. It's based off of the population proportion, um, one minus that, or the Q, right? So P naught, Q naught, and then over N. So nowhere in there is there actual standard deviation. We can get the standard error without a standard deviation at all. As opposed to with our means one, our standard error is based off of a standard deviation over the square root of n. Does that make sense? So we don't need a standard deviation at all. So that's why with these problems, you're never going to be given one. And that's like the quickest way for you to tell that you're dealing with proportions. So um, as I mentioned, the set statistic is calculated. And this should look familiar, kind of um, based off of older stuff. But it's not an equation that's like the mean one. So here we have a sample proportion, kind of similar to the sample mean, right? minus the population proportion, or the proportion from the null hypothesis, so sample mean minus the, the mean from the null hypothesis, sample proportion minus the proportion from the null hypothesis, divided by some measure of spread. And so in this case, our measure of spread is given by this equation here. And so it's the square root, all of, all of this under the square root. The proportion, I guess, of success is kind of going back to like the binomial stuff. Um, but the p from the null hypothesis, the q from the null hypothesis is just 1 minus that p. Um, so here we are with that equation. And then all over this is the, the sam um, sample size. So again, we have a breakdown here on the right hand side of p hat is the sample proportion, q naught is 1 minus p naught, and this is all based off of the null hypothesis, and then our standard error. So now that, again, We've been able to find the rejection region for this thing before, and it's just using z, right? So to get the critical z value, all we need is 0.5 minus alpha, or alpha over 2, and look that up on our table. So now that you know how to get the rejection region, you know where the test statistic you calculate must lie in order for you to say that you finding a sample as extreme as you did, or more, um, is not likely due to chance. So basically, our sample is so far off that, like, yeah, there's some variability, but at this point, it's so far from the, what the null says it should have been that we reject the null hypothesis. This is the third time I've said this, so it should kind of be uh, a repeat, and hopefully it sinks in pretty well. <laughs> um, so let's do our first example. A previous study found that 40% of children in elementary school are overweight. A new study of 200, 225 children found that 45% of elementary students are now overweight. Test to claim that the proportion of children overweight is greater than previously hypothesized in an alpha of 0.01. So, we have like this established null status quo of the percent of elementary school children who are overweight, right? And what is that? That's that 40%, right? So here's our population proportion, or proportion from our null hypothesis. And we're testing, and nowhere in here is standard deviation, right? So we know automatically we're dealing with proportions. But we're testing the claim that the proportion of children is greater than previously hypothesized. Greater than tells me what? What kind of sign am I using? Basically tells you, right? It's greater than. Greater than falls on our alternate because it doesn't have an equal sign, right? So P is greater than, and what was it previously hypothesized to be? It was supposed to be around 40%, right? So 
And yeah, I mean, I mentioned this before as well, but percentages turn into decimals and statistics. So it's going to be P is greater than 0.40, not 40%. And then everything else is, if it's greater than, everything else is going to be less than or equal to that. <coughs> so greater than is telling me to look at what side of the distribution. The right side, right? So our alpha of 0.01, does that get split in two? No, right? And the reason why I drew down the middle and I put a zero is just to kind of remind ourselves that zero standard deviations away from the mean, right? So that middle point is the mean itself. It's not any distance away from itself. So that's going to get a zero. And we're only focusing on the right side because we're doing a right tail test. And so this little tail here gets that full 0.01. So let's highlight that and call this guy our rejection region. And our second step is to decide what is the value associated with that. So the middle is zero, but what's this point here that we decide to reject the null hypothesis? So our critical values, so or TC, I'm sorry, actually we're using a Z, right? Because we're using our proportions. So reminder, proportions is always going to be Z. So our Z critical value is based off of 0.5 minus alpha, which in this case is 0.5 minus 0.01 or 0.49. So our Z critical is going to be, so let's go ahead and look up on our table what our Z is going to be. So we're looking for anything closest to 4,900. 4,900, 4,900. So here we are, 4,901 is the closest thing because 4898 is 2 away, while 4901 is only 1 away, right? So that's associated with 2.3, let's go up, 2.33. So that's going to be our critical value for our Z, or kind of like that cutoff point where we're going to be rejecting. And so for those of you who can use a table on your exams, I'm only doing this for um, those of you who can use it on your exam, just because I have a little shortcut here. So we have an alpha of 0.01 and so our z is 2.33 so again for those of you who can use this little shortcut great use it for those of you who can I'm gonna do it the long way every single time anyways and you guys already know that so let's go back up 2.33 is our critical value and it's gonna be positive so any z statistic that we calculate that's greater than 2.33 we're gonna be rejecting the null hypothesis Let's go ahead and move on to step number three. What is that test statistic? How far away is our sample in terms of standard deviations away from what the null says the, the actual average should be? So z is x bar minus the mean from the null hypothesis, I lied, p hat minus the, pro the proportion from our null hypothesis divided by our standard error for those sample proportions, right? So let's go ahead and first things first, let's get that standard error before we hop back into that problem. So it's the square root of the population proportion Q, which is 1 minus that, over N. So here we have the square root of, and P naught is 0.4 <coughs> times 0.6, all divided by 225, right? And so 0.4 times 0.6, so we end up getting 0.0327. And then from there, we plug that into our full problem, right? So we got 0.45, which is the proportion from our sample that we got from our new 225 children, minus 0.40, all divided by 0 0.0327. And that gives us 1.53. So we plug that into our bigger picture, and here's 1.53. And so we need to ask ourselves for our last conclusion, right, whether we reject or fail to reject, is this thing lying, or is our statistic lying within the rejection region, or is it not lying in the rejection region? In this case, it isn't, right? So, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so moral of the story is that there is insufficient evidence for us to support the claim that the proportion of children overweight is greater than previously hypothesized, which in this case was 40%. So even though technically, like, number-wise, yeah, it's greater than 40% because we got 45%, based on variability and all that stuff, um, and I, I just don't want to get too into detail with that.
moral story is that it's not high enough for us to say that it's greater than that, right? So that's basically it for example number one, and that's it for proportions. So let's go ahead and move on to some practice problems and see if we got this stuff down.